Hopefully you've had a chance to watch the previous video on how to create the body of the two-point perspective camera. We're working from this little isometric view here, which is available in the bigger workbook you'll be given in class. You'll notice that since the last video, what I've done is I've outlined the main body of the camera with the exception of these two lines here. The reason for doing that is that they might be overlapped by the, the actual lens coming out of the camera. In order to get this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start, first of all, by getting the center position of where the, the lens contacts or comes into contact with the front surface of the object. Now, if we were to take uh, a little point on our isometric, the actual center would be about there. You can see it's about midway on this little body here. So what I'm gonna do is on this section here, I'm gonna start by extending the line vertically up and then I'm gonna look for where its height is. And again, that would be roughly in the center of this body here. It lines up roughly with that there, which I've already got a line for, but I'll just over it just so it's a little bit clearer. Now this point here is gonna be the center of the very back surface of the cylinder. What I then need to do is decide how wide this cylinder is or this circle is on the back surface. I'm gonna start by marking a distance forwards from it and the distance at the back will be ever so slightly shorter just to illustrate that perspective, whereas the distance at the top and bottom should be fairly equal. What I'll then do is from the top and bottom surfaces, I'm gonna extend from the vanishing point through them. So I'll project these edges up. That'll give me the width of my circle. And what I'm gonna to do to be, to be able to work out how this circle is formed, what I'll do is I'm gonna join from each corner of this little square, I'm just gonna join the corners. They're gonna form some guide points for the circle. Now that I have these diagonals, I'm gonna look at marking a halfway point and then half again, marking a halfway point and then half again. Same process, halfway, half again half and then half. And what I'm able to do is I'm gonna sketch what would be an ellipse, so not a perfect circle, but an ellipse all the way through these. So basically just try to blend the curve through the outside point. So ignoring those little ones on the inside and sketching an ellipse around the outside here. Now that I have that, what I can do is I can project from the vanishing point through each one of those little points and I can follow the exact same process on the front. So from the vanishing point, project through the top one. I'm not gonna project all the way forward, I'm just gonna go out from it. It's gonna make this process a little bit quicker. Taking the very edge here and going round all these points. So the reason for not sketching all the way from the vanishing point is that it will just reduce the amount of lines I've got and it might actually make it easier for me to see exactly where I'm sketching and what I'm joining up later on. So I'm just going from the little points, going forward, just approximately, not any set distance forward. I'm gonna add that set distance in a minute. Now that I have all these lines protruding forward, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark a little distance now, probably gonna go about five millimeters forward on each line. So a point here, point here, a point here and following that all the way around. And what I'm then able to do is do the exact same process of joining these up with a, a curved surface. And that leaves me with the perspective cylinder that's sticking out of the front of that object. Now I could go through the same process of drawing another rectangle, another square, and dividing it up, but because I've already got this surface here, which I can line in, because I know that nothing else is gonna stick out from it, I add that in. What I'd be able to do is on the front surface to be able to get the little hollowed out section is I would create what we call a concentric circle. So I'm just gonna sketch that freehand. I'm basically gonna follow the perimeter on the outside just a little bit narrower. Sketching that in. I'll be 
able to line that in. And then do the exact same on the inside. Just to get the inlay of that. And then the last, the last part of the drawing would be just to join from there. And close that up. Now that little technique of using the concentric circle could also work on this surface here for the viewfinder, where if I just mark my distance there and my distance there, as long as I follow the angle of that line here and the angle of that line here, I could then add in the depth of the viewfinder as well. And that would complete the two-point perspective of the camera.